Good afternoon and welcome everyone to our Peace Health webinar, Boost Your Mood, Tips for Healthy Comfort Foods. My name is Summer Meyer and I'll be your moderator today. Thank you so much for spending this 30 minutes of your lunch time with us. I just want to go over a couple of uh, housekeeping items. We would love for you to engage with us today during the session by voting in the polls, by asking questions in the chat, and by taking our survey at the very end. Now that we have these logistics out of the way, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you our speaker, Cecilia Jacobson. Cecilia is a registered dietitian and also a certified diabetes educator for our cardiovascular wellness and rehabilitation program at our Peace Health Riverbend Hospital, which is in Springfield, Oregon. She's passionate about helping her patients achieve sustainable diet and lifestyle changes in line with their goals. Cecilia received her education from Bastyr University, which is in Kenmore, Washington, and she's worked for the Peace Health Organization for just about 15 years. She started in the clinical setting, working with hospitalized inpatients, and then expanded to outpatient clinics. She also uh, does cooking demos, health fairs, and various wellness outreach events. When Cecilia is not at work, you can find her outdoors or volunteering. She enjoys cycling and has ridden Cycle Oregon multiple times on the Candle Light Lighter Ride for a child team. She also likes to camp, hike, and tend to her small garden to create her own culinary experiments at home. So thank you so much, Cecilia, for being with us today. And I will turn it over to you for a brief overview. Thank you, Summer. It is a pleasure to be here. So let's dive right into it. We have four sections we'll be covering today. First, we'll explore ways to provide comfort amidst our ever-changing world. During this section, we'll break into We'll break it down to some reasons why we seek comfort and what people are doing to comfort themselves during this time in history. Next, we'll explore the habit loop. This is where we'll review and talk about how we might cope moving forward, which will lead us into looking closer at creating healthier comfort foods, comfort food substitutes. And finally, we'll introduce the HALT method, which will offer a practical way to check in with yourself and be mindful about eating so that you can leave this session with a tool in mind. In July 2020, one poll surveyed 2,000 Americans and learned that 75% reported they are eating comfort foods. 37% reported they consumed comfort foods daily. 38% reported they consumed comfort foods every other day. Six out of 10 respondents said their go-to food was ice cream, followed closely by chocolate and or candy. 44% of people learned new recipes, while 32% took online cooking classes. As we were asked to stay at home, the trend on how people ate shifted from consumers spending less on meals out of the home and organic foods at the grocery store. With restaurants closed, consumers began to purchase more frozen pizza and box cereals instead of organic greens and whole grains. From April 2019 to April 2020, some manufacturers saw an increase in their products. Campbell's Soup reported an increase of 59%. Craigu Pasta Sauce increased 52%. Pepperidge Farm Goldfish Crackers increased 23%. The global survey looked at 16,000 people in 16 major countries from May 7th through May 10th, 2020, to see how COVID-19 was impacting people in 13 different areas of their lives. The three most impacted aspects of United States individuals were 28% reported suffering from anxiety. Tied for second place at 19% was depression, overeating, and under-exercising. And lastly, at 15% was insomnia. These impacts on our life have been postulated to lack of structure, boredom, and even age. The loss of our regular or normal 
coping mechanisms such as going to the gym, access to certain foods, self-care items, supplies can lead to feeling of helplessness and anxiety. Summer, let's hear from the audience to see what their favorite comfort foods are. All right. So I'm going to set up a poll here, and I would invite you to take it and interact with us. Um, what is your number one go-to comfort food? Let's hear from folks on the line. We've got lots and lots of participants joining us today, almost 100 people. Wow. Um, is it sweets, the cookies, candy, cake? Is it creamy, pudding, ice cream, or soup? I'm a salty girl. I prefer chips, crackers, and dip. I can tell you that right now. Um, <laughs> or something else entirely. Uh, okay, looks like we've got a great amount here. So I'm just going to wait a couple more seconds for those who haven't yet voted. And then we'll close out the poll and we'll share the results with you. All right, let's close out the poll. And let's share these out. All right, so Cecilia, how, how do our numbers look? <laughs> Participants on the line. So it looks like something salty came in at first place at 53%. Well, something sweet came in at second place at 33% and tied for third place with something creamy and other foods. All right, so my salty food wins. Okay, let me go ahead and hide this re these results. Um, and this is, uh, this is from our almost 100 attendees, so this is great. Um, let's go ahead and I'll turn it back over to you, Cecilia. Thank you. Thank you all for participating in our poll. Let's now take a look at Charles Dilger's habit loop from his book, The Power of Habit, and how we can use it as a tool to help us cope moving forward. First, identify the cue. The cue is generally a trigger that tells the brain to go into auto mode in which a habit in which a habit in which habits to use. When a habit emerges, the brain stops fully participating in decision making. The cue, in addition to the trigger, in addition to triggering a routine, must also trigger a craving for the reward to come. The routine, which can be physical, mental, or emotional. Last is the reward, which helps your brain figure out if the particular loop is worth remembering for the future. If you identify the cues and the rewards, you can change the routine. A new routine that can provide familiar relief needs to happen in order to permanently change according to the author. An example would be, the cue could be a time of day. For example, three o'clock in the afternoon, you decide that you're hungry for a cookie. So your routine is, I'll go down to the cafeteria and get my cookie. So you walk down to the cafeteria, and while you're at the cafeteria, you will begin engaging in conversation with some of your coworkers. Upon further investigation and looking into this habit loop you've created, you realize that it isn't the cookie that you're looking for. It's the social interaction with your coworkers. So it's been recommended by professionals to process the emotion. Instead of stuffing them, prioritize self-care to help keep you healthy. Write about it in a journal. Talk with a trusted friend or family member. Create something, art projects, vision boards, gardening, baking, cooking. Speaking of cooking, let's look closer at creating healthier comfort foods. We'll start with some of the top comfort food go-tos. Let's start with sweets. Statistica 2020 reported a 20.3 increase in sales growth of cookies from 2019 to 2020. My Skinny Chunky Monkey Cookies use ripe bananas, oatmeal, and applesauce as the base. Add to some nuts, healthy fat, and mini chocolate chips to please both kids and adults. Next is berry ice cream. It's another easy recipe that will also help you get closer to that recommended five cups of fruits and or veggies per day. Simply take your favorite frozen fruit, place it into a blender or food processor with milk or a milk alternative, a little bit of sugar or a sugar substitute like stevia, and vanilla extract. Blend all ingredients and eat it now 
or place it in the freezer as a treat for later. Last, the fruity kebab would be a fun treat for kiddos to assemble while on a Zoom break from school. Simply slice angel food cake into half inch or quarter inch cubes, have fresh fruit sliced such as strawberries, apples, peaches, pears, grapes, pineapple, whatever you like, allowing kiddos to skewer up a piece of angel food cake followed by a few pieces of fruit and another cube of angel food cake. This can be a fun snack for everyone. Sometimes it's not sweets you crave, it's salty or crunchy, which was the winner of our poll. So salty, this crunchy is what foods, I prefer. <laughs> which were reported to have, <laughs> me too, <laughs> which were reported to have had a 14.8% increase in sales from 2019 to 2020. The touchdown herb dip is a versatile dip for veggies, chips, or as a spread. Combine 16 ounces of a plain non-fat Greek yogurt with a salt-free seasoning such as Mrs. Dash or your favorite herb blend. Let it refrigerate for about 15 minutes. The longer you allow it to refrigerate, the more the flavors will marry and intensify. Um, so if you have the time, it's recommended to leave it in there longer. Then you can serve it chilled, topped in a bowl with scallions or not if you desire. Next is the cranberry pumpkin seed salad. It's a sweet, salty, crunchy way to get closer again to that recommended five cups of fruits and or veggies per day. Topped with a homemade balsamic maple syrup dressing. A seasonal favorite is sweet potato fries. Peel and slice sweet potatoes into fry-shaped pieces and toss with olive oil and your favorite salt-free seasoning. For example, garlic powder or cinnamon, or for a spicy take, Cajun and chili powder. Then other times we find ourselves in the mood for carbs in the form of pasta, bread, or other warm comfort foods. With football season here and virtual tailgating, why not make a hearty chili with cornbread? This three bean chili served with hot cornbread or corn muffins will leave you warm and satisfied, ready to watch your favorite football team win. If chili and cornbread are not your thing, how about a creamy cheese sauce that can be served over noodles, steamed or roasted vegetables, or even loaded on, on a loaded baked potato? This is not your traditional cheese sauce. Combined one medium sweet potato, about a pound, with half of an onion, a large carrot, and a bay leaf in a pot of water, and boil until the vegetables easily pierce with a fork. Meanwhile, soak the raw, unsalted cashews in water for up to 24 hours. The longer the cashews soak, they will produce a creamier texture. Place the drained cashews, drained soaked cashews um, that are now soft in the food processor or high-powered blender with the boiled vegetables and a cup and a half of the vegetable water. Add garlic powder, onion powder, fresh garlic, and salt. Process until smooth and serve immediately or refrigerate for later. For a spicy take, add some seeded jalapenos, chili powder, and red bell pepper. Eating more healthy substitutes than our body needs or when time and situations do not allow to make the healthy substitute, practice the HALT method. The HALT method is a way to check in with yourself and practice mindful eating. The H stands for hunger. Make sure you're not eating because the clock tells us to, or some other cue tells you it's time to eat. The A stands for angry, anxious, annoyed. Take some deep breaths. Try some self-soothing techniques like walking, writing, coloring, listening to music, doing a puzzle, practicing yoga, or listening to a podcast. The L stands for lonely or bored. Call or text a friend or family member. Read a book or pray. The T stands for thirsty or tired. Hunger can sometimes show up as thirst in disguise. Try drinking a glass of water or take a quick power nap. Taking time to pay attention to the taste of foods, when and if you, are, you choose to indulge in a treat, try making it a special, mindful occasion. Summer, let's hear from our audience to see what strategies resonate with them that they plan to use. 
All right, thank you, Cecilia. Um, so for all of our participants, I am going to go ahead and launch another poll for you to participate in. Um, what tip are you going to use right away? Um, we've gone over the HALT method. We've gone over trying healthier versions of your favorite comfort foods. And we've even gone over something called the habit loop to sort of identify what those cues, routines, and rewards are for yourself. Or is it something entirely different? Feel free to type into our um, chat window. Looks like there's lots of folks taking the survey right now. Thank you so much for participating. We'll just leave it open a few more seconds here. And I will just add one comment uh, narrative. As you were describing the cheesy sauce, I, uh, Cecilia, I remembered that I did make my first cashew cheese sauce for the first time during this COVID um, stay at home order. And I definitely, uh, it surprised me how delicious it tasted. I wasn't expecting it to be so good. And I sort of wanted to put cashew sauce on everything now. So <laughs> that's where I'm at. Um, I think that's a great healthy substitute for me personally. It's so versatile and it'll last in the refrigerator for a good week. Yeah. You can it put it on various good. things. Mm hmm I sure did. I made nachos and all sorts of things. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close our poll out <laughs> and let's share the results. How are they, uh, how are they looking? What does the audience plan to try? So they're pretty tied up. So at 34% um, was identifying my habits using the habit loop with the cue, the routine, and the reward. Um, tied for second place was the HALT method, the hungry, angry, anxious, lonely, bored, tired, thirsty. And then um, also at second place was to try healthier versions of their favorite recipes. Nice, nice, nice. That all sounds wonderful. Perfect. Um, all right. Well, let me just um, address a couple of the questions. Please feel free to, to post more questions in our chat. We're going to have a few minutes for a Q&A here with Cecilia before, um, before letting everyone go back to their day. Um, I do want to um, let you all know that we will be posting a recording of this webinar. Uh, you'll receive a follow-up email in about a week. And uh, you'll also be able to use and download our HALT infographic. And yes, we are, thanks for asking this one, Kate. Um, yes, we are going to uh, make these delicious, healthy comfort food recipes available on our website. Um, the ones that Cecilia mentioned and more. So we actually have a lot of great things. So feel free to check back at this URL or uh, when you get the follow-up email, uh, from us next week, um, you can definitely click on that. Um, Connie, yes, we can make the slides available. That's a great question. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up if there's any additional questions, anything burning, anything you wanted to ask uh, Cecilia as a dietitian. Please go ahead and post your questions now. I'll go ahead and read some of the ones that come in. We'll just spend a few minutes on Q&A. Um, thanks, Carol Jo, for asking this one. So, Cecilia, this one's from Carol Jo, and she says, I am eating a lot of fruit lately. Can you get too much sugar this way, even though it is natural? That's a really good question, Carol. Fruit is a wonderful source of antioxidants. With anything, there is a, a threshold. More is not always better. Um, maybe trying to keep it under five servings of fruit per day and then adding in some vegetables with that as well. We have another question here from Al, and uh, he's asking, what are your thoughts on eating salty, savory foods that have a lot of spices in them? Do spices like turmeric, basil, oregano, salt, pepper, et cetera, have any adverse effects on our health? That's a good question also, Al. So the recommendations for salt are less than 2,300 milligrams per day. That's less than a teaspoon of salt from every single thing that enters your mouth, not just the salt shaker. 
So unfortunately, food manufacturers like to add salt to products for us. So being careful and trying to keep that under 2,300 milligrams for the day. In regards to the other herbs and spices that you were asking about, the basil, turmeric, pepper, I mean, you could eat as much as you can tolerate. Some people can't tolerate a lot of pepper because it's too hot for them. Turmeric, you might notice you start turning a little bit yellow if you eat a lot of turmeric. Um, or a lot of sweet potatoes or carrots that contain that beta carotene in them. Um, But turmeric is a wonderful anti-inflammatory, so including it in your cooking is a good idea. Thank you. Thanks for that, Cecilia. We do have another question. These are awesome. Thank you guys for posting all of these. Um, Hillary is wondering, she's allergic to nuts, so are there any other uh, alternatives for use in the cheesy sauce, like maybe garbanzo beans? That's another really good question, Hillary. I have never experimented with other things besides nuts and the cheesy sauce. Um, I wouldn't see why the garbanzo beans wouldn't work because they're basically the basis of hummus and that has a creamy sauce as well or a creamy texture. Yeah, you can use the aquafaba, the liquid that's in the beans, as an egg replacer in, in recipes. I know that. So I wouldn't see why you couldn't use the beans as a nut replacer. Very good, very good. Here's one from Crystal. Thanks, Crystal. I'm wondering about this too. Um, Dark chocolate is my go-to comfort food. I know it provides some health benefits, but where does it land on your bad versus good scale, Cecilia? Inquiring minds want to (laughs) know. That's a good question. Um, So with dark chocolate, so the darker the better. You want to stay away from the milk chocolates because they have a lot more sugar added to them and don't have as many of the health benefits to them. So, you know, a small piece of dark chocolate as a treat, maybe a couple times a week, trying not to make these things a habit. Again, treating it as a treat. Once in a while, you can have the dark chocolate, um, but it's when we start having our treats every day that they are no longer treats, they're a habit. So once in a while, a piece of dark chocolate, I would say, is completely acceptable. I love that answer. (laughs) Um, Thank you so much, Cecilia, for answering (laughs) all of these questions from the audience. Um, I'll I'll go ahead and answer the final one that we actually have time for in our allotted time today. This one's from Carolyn. Um, Are you planning on any ongoing classes by chance? This is great information. Um, So thank you, Carolyn. Um, That actually is a perfect segue into our next slide. Uh, Peace Health offers a monthly e-newsletter, and if you're not already signed up, I would highly recommend that you subscribe at peacehealth.org slash healthy dash you slash subscribe. Um, When you get on our email e-newsletter list, you'll get alerted about our future webinars and also health news and also local events. Um, So it's a really great, great tool that we have for reaching out um, and kind of sharing with you what's going on um, and a lot of healthy community uh, tips and tricks. Um, Then the final piece I will share with you is we are going to offer a next session with Cecilia. It's going to be in one month. So mark your calendars for October 30th. The title is going to be Going Sugarless, Three Strategies for Curbing Your Sweet Tooth. So we haven't posted about this yet. Because you you all are in attendance today, you're getting the sneak peek. You're getting the early insider scoop and information. So uh, keep on the lookout for that. If you do subscribe to our um, e-newsletter, you will get that heads up when it's available for uh, registration. Finally, I would love to invite for you to take our survey. We do read every single one of your comments so that we can make sure to improve for the next session going forward. And I just wanna take a moment to thank Cecilia for sharing her in-depth knowledge with us today. And thank you all for spending a half an hour with us today. Uh, Peace Health is here to help when you need us. And until then, stay safe and be well, and we'll see you next time.